All right, so let's talk greenhouse. I built this greenhouse, I started in maybe June of 2018 and finished it because I was in no rush around September of 2018 and just I wanted to get it done just in time for the winter to put some plants in there to extend out my season I keep like last year I kept several in buckets containers so that this way I can roll them in there for the winter now I did a lot of research, did a lot of looking, and I had an idea or a way of building a greenhouse. And I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. And so I kind of took my time in engineering the greenhouse the way I thought, I think, it should be efficient. Now, that's the north wall. You're looking at the north wall, and the sun never hits that side. Well, a little bit, but it, it, it's the north wall. It doesn't get much sun. So I decided to make that wall, a very strong wall, to be able to handle um, high winds. Now, the... You know what? Let's just start from the base. I have some still shots. I really wasn't planning on putting this onto uh, YouTube or videotaping it, but the frame that you can't see, hopefully I can get a picture in between this. I'm not even good with this yet, but I'm learning. Anyway, the frame is four by six uh, pressure treated, and the dimensions are eight foot deep, and 10 foot long. So I I uh, put the, I shiplapped the joints, hopefully I can get a picture of that, and I squared it up and leveled it out and put it right on the ground, right directly right on top of the ground. Then I dug the center out. I took the there was sod there with topsoil. I dug all that out. Then I dug down about another foot and a half and got past all of the, the clay. The you know not that there was much because this is Long Island, so there's not a lot of clay. But it, it, the um, the ground didn't absorb the moisture as easily as the sand, which was about a foot and a half down. Uh, oh yeah, prior to putting the frame down the um, the 4x6 CCA uh, and they're not even CCA anymore they're, uh, they're just pressure treated um, I soaked everything and used motor oil and to absorb and to uh, to just get a little more uh, life out of those beams because you'll notice that some you put in the ground they last a long time and some you put in the ground and they're gone in a couple of years so I don't know manufacturing problems I, I, I have no idea why but it does anyway so I dug down about a foot and a half and then I put in there's that Robin he is in the worst way he wants to make a nest on this property anyway getting back they um, so I put a, I, I got a, a load of pea gravel, which is very small, round rocks. They're self-leveling. And I poured them in about a foot. And then I put, um, then I uh, put uh, the landscape fabric down. Then I put sand on top of that, about another, maybe three or four inches of sand and then I put brick pavers on top of that so that uh, any water that um, is spilled or anything that gets onto the thing is, um, it just drains right down and, and no nothing will just sit. And then I uh, 
built a frame all out of pressure treated wood. Panels are polycarbonate plastic. They're uh, double walled. And because I knew I was going to use it for um, to hold plants in in the early part of the season, well, I wasn't planning on originally doing that, but I wound up doing it anyway. So the plants are already in there. And they're going to they're going to stay in there for the whole season, which is another set of problems which I get into. And for stability. I put uh, because the way the um, the way the sun comes in, I have the trees blocking the sun, so I don't get sun over here until the high point. And then the other way is the same exact problem. I don't get sun until it reaches over there. So basically, the lower part of the of the greenhouse was fairly useless to have glass all the way down and the fence when the that's the south over there and during the winter when the sun is low in the sky the fence also blocks any type of low light that comes into the low part of the greenhouse so with the grandkids and protection and a lot of variables, I decided to build a three foot wall. So this comes up about 36 inches up to here. Um, then I, when you buy the polycarbonate panels that I got over at uh, either Home Depot or Lowe's, I can't remember. They're two foot wide and eight foot long. They have these strips that you have to buy. They're very expensive, like $15 a piece. And each one of those white strips that you see between the panels um, would cost another $15 each. And there's three over that way, there's three on the other side, and there's four on the back wall. So that added a lot of cost. So what I did was, that's, those pieces of plastic are the plastic that they use to for doing screen work to put screens together, and they were just uh, I don't know, dollar, two dollars, they were cheap. And I decided to use them instead of the other pieces. And what I did was I silicone sealed between the panels prior to putting those down. And then I got the, the rubberized screws that you use for metal roofing in white. And I put them every six inches. And uh, it seems to be holding up extremely well. Extremely well. So, and then on the top, is a piece of galvanized roofing, uh, a, a galvanized uh, cap, way at the, up at the top. And then I built these uh, windows, so this way I can open up for ventilation. And at the top of them, those hinges, I hope you can see them, because I really can't. Those hinges, they, um, they're designed to slide out. So these windows can actually be slid off and unhooked, which will happen, and they'll be stored on the back wall. And the outside shell, all this on the outside is made out of um, pallet wood. I stripped a few pallets put them up and uh, stained them with a cedar color. It looks good. I like it. Now the roof, that's white cedar stained also. Well, it's darkening up now. 
um, it's in a triple layer. And if you go buy the red cedar in the stores, it's about $100 a bundle, if not more. And that's, uh, the, that's the good, like, for siding for the house. Like, the siding that's on that house, my house, that's, um, that's red cedar. That's number, those are the blues, the number one perfections. Well, they've been on the house for, i got to be... 12, 15 years. I look good. Anyway. But if you go by, they're called shim shingles. They use them to uh, shim things up. They're the, the, the leftovers. They're the, the, the ones with holes in them. They're, they're just, it's just a big mess of shingles. And if you take the bundles apart and you run them through a, circular, uh, through a uh, table saw, you can trim out all of the bad pieces and you can get a roof that looks pretty good, pretty cheap. I'm gonna say maybe I used two, two and a half bundles. So that roof cost me between the two sides and the front, maybe $30 as opposed to, uh, well, you'd probably do it, it's almost a square. You'd probably do it for maybe out of the real good shingles, maybe a hundred, hundred and twenty would have cost you. The uh, that's a vent up at the top, by the way. The um, weather vane I bought off of uh, I think eBay. It could have been Amazon. Uh, just a little extra touch. But that vent has a door. I close it in the winter time and put insulation in there so make it kind of draft free. Then I built, these are uh, Dutch doors. The tops open individually, the bottoms open individually. They all open to go in and out with something big or in most cases, all I do is just leave this one door open, the other one stays pretty much bolted and locked. The, uh, these I got over at Harbor Freight. Excellent little gadgets because they're able to, you can lock the door fairly simply. Now I, I keep it up here, I just lock both of it, but you can lock the door fairly simply with just push the lever and it locks it down nice and tight. And then I have a couple hours, five hours, four hours. I can't remember, but they work well. Now, when I built this, the, um, everything that has this insulating panel on, this is a bubble wrap. Um, aluminum foil one side, aluminum foil on the back side, and bubble wrap in this. So it has, it's an insulating thing. Now again, the north wall and all the walls that are lower um, have the, have this bubble wrap on it. So that got uh, tacked up onto the two by fours. Then plywood, three quarter inch plywood went over that. And then the, the pallet wood went over that. And that's basically how the frame got done. And all of the joints have hurricane clips on them. And the roof, although you can't see it, it it's strapped. There's a strap that goes over this, over the ridge, and down this way. And they're about two feet long and they're nailed in. And they're underneath the, the panels. And each joint going over the top is strapped in steel. Now, what the aluminum foil does, and again, I, I couldn't find any of this on YouTube. It could be there. I don't know. I never saw it. 
But what this foil does is it acts as a reflector. Because again, that's the, this is the north side of the house, the north wall, and the south wall, where the sun comes in that way, she's gonna come in and she's going to reflect off of this and bounce the light all the way around the greenhouse, adding to um, the sunlight that's just floating around inside here. So, uh, I don't know how, you know, again, this is be the first full season that I'm using it. And we need to see exactly how it's all gonna work out. But prior to putting the two by four on top of, these are the, okay, let's go. This is the four by six piece of um, sling flat. So it's six inches this way four inches down and then the frame went on top of that but I got this very heavy duty and they used to use this for in between uh, concrete for expansion joint and it's four inches and I put that down all around the base so that it separated because there's gonna be a lot of moisture in here so it separated the the base and it lifted the frame up off of the um, off of the base and kept a little uh, barrier to hopefully uh, reduce the amount of moisture and that stuff won't soak up moisture won't wick moisture it doesn't it doesn't it just it, it's a uh, it's a non-absorbent material and these are the brick pavers I had these left over from the job, so they just went all across the bottom. And then in the winter time, I have a uh, little propane heater that keeps in here fairly warm. I can keep it, uh, even if it's 30 degrees, 20 degrees outside, I can keep it 60, 65 degrees inside here. I ran water into here, so this is um, this water is attached to uh, an underground line that goes three feet underground and goes into the house. And I also have, which you can't see anymore, because I tapped into that line over there, which is three foot down, which that was sitting out there for the longest time. And right about underneath the wood chips, I'm going to say right about there, is a curb valve and has a cap on it, but it's buried underneath the, uh, the wood chips right now. And that can open and close. So in the winter time, I drain down the system, and then I close that valve. And so no, no water will go over to that head, so I won't have to worry about that freezing. And then the water is underground and it comes up into here. So I can keep water running in here throughout the winter until I shut down the heating system. And I also ran uh, 30 amp 220 electric into here. Um, and then a circulating fan which I gotta tell you, that fan is phenomenal. Nice and strong, can really suck out the moisture and the uh, heat out very, very quickly. Um, let's see. And I think that's pretty much it. I do have uh, in the, uh, I have them all out right now, but there's shelves, wire shelves that go along all the way around the edge. I could probably get some pictures of it. And these shelves, they, um, I can, right now they're folded down because I don't need them, but when I need them, I just put the legs back on, one screw, and they hold up. They interlock, the closet shelves, they interlock up, up at the top over here, and then there's just one screw that's holding it to the wall. So when I need them back up again, just for um, four legs that have to be screwed back on. 
Oh yeah, and then after I finished, I decided to add this roof on over here, which I am so glad I did. And when I did that, they, I also decided I had a bunch of field stone that was left over. So I dug down about four or five inches, maybe six inches in spots. And I laid out this pattern exactly because that bed wasn't there. I laid out the pattern right there. Then I framed this all out, mixed the concrete, set everything down. Tack, you know, tapped them all into place. Some of them tapped a little too hard, like that guy, I broke it. I think there's one more that I broke too. But anyway, and then prior to the concrete setting, I took a wire brush and I wired brushed the top of the concrete off and exposed the bluestone that was in there. And it really makes it look like it's been here a long time. And when I did that, I dug out the corners. Because originally, the 4x6s were just sitting on the floor. So I dug out the corner down about 3 feet, maybe 20 inches, 24 inches round, in this corner, and in that corner over there. And I rebarred it, and I put in J-bolts and drilled them down through the 4x6 and you'll see them right there and I bolted the frame down because the doors were working flaw flawlessly I mean they really were working nice and I didn't want them to um, get stuck or twist or bend so I did these both corners see them in there too and it locked everything down nice and tight and then I when I put the concrete in I also rolled it up up to the edge so I can roll in stuff pretty easy water shifts away and there's plenty of times when it's raining out and you're closing up because there's a you know there's a bunch of locks on here. There's a bunch of different things that to shut it down. And you could be standing out here in the rain. And with this roof on, it makes things a lot easier. You take your time closing up the place. And I think that's pretty much it on the greenhouse. I'm going to try to get a bunch of pictures together of um, when I was building it. And I'll just be snapshots. There's no video of it. Okay, thank you.